Uh, and good afternoon. It's afternoon time right now in New Jersey. Brother Charlie here, Pastor Charlie Ministry of Salvation. And we're going back to the book study a little more for the brothers and sisters that are going up online, learning about this book, The Counterfeit Guidance. We're starting on page, uh, chapter six, page 134, Counterfeit Guidance. Just bear with me as I'm going to read again today. Counterfeit guidance is one of the fruits of the possession of the body, which the deceiver obtains through guile. And guile is just straight up uh, deception, deceiving spirits, of which the deceiver obtains through guile. Many believers think that the, the uh, guidance or leading of God to be only by a voice saying, do this or do that, or by a compulsory or compulsion movement or impulse, apart from the action of the volition of the man. Volition means that we need to use our brains and we need to think about our decisions sometimes. And, and they point to the expression used about the Lord. So they're always using something that lines up with God or scripture to bring that subtle deception onto us all. Or by compulsory movement impulse apart from the action of the volition of men. They point to the expression used about the Lord because the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. But this was abnormal in the life of Christ for the statement implies intense spirits, spiritual conflict, uh, wherein the Holy Spirit departed from his ordinary guidance. We have a glimpse into a similar intense movement in the spirit of the Lord in Jesus in the gospel of John 11, and let me read it to you here, John 11, verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. And that was an illustration of Lazarus dying, and he was grieving for the situation. And... Uh, when groaning with indignation in his spirit, he moved to the grave of Lazarus in both instances. He was moving forward to direct conflict. He was going to go hand to hand combat with the devil, with Satan, scripture says. In case, in the case of Lazarus, with Satan as the prince of death. And I talked about that this morning in our daily house of prayer about the spirit of death and how we need to exercise our faith when praying for people to make sure we always bind because we have been given power over all the power of the enemy that in people that have infirmities or family line illnesses we always got to take premature death out of the equation because god gives us three score and ten long life and and Jesus was dealing with a dead man here, Lazarus, because Simeon agony was of the same character when he was dealing with the enemy. And he was saying, you know, take this cup away from me because he came to do the will of his father. And, and that's something we all got to understand when we're studying spiritual books. But normally the Lord was guided or led in simple fellowship with the Father. Remember, deciding, acting, reasoning, thinking as one who knew the will of the Father and intelligently speaking reverently, he carried what God the Father gave him to do. The voice from heaven was rare. And as the Lord himself said, for the sake of others and not for himself, and mind you, I'm on 135 right now. We started in page 134 of uh, chapter six, War on the Saints. 
for those that are trying to follow or have their books open. This is the War on the Saints book study where we get a little more into talking about it instead of just reading it. And not for himself. He knew the Father's will. Remember, everything Jesus came to do was the Father's will. And with every faculty of his being, as we read in, in uh, Matthew, and also he did in John. So let's look at John from the scripture viewpoint today. In, in the book of John, then they brought to him, they sought to take him away, but no man laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. John 5.30 says, I can of my own self do nothing as I hear. I judge and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. And then Jesus reiterated in John 6, 38, for I've come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And you know, we all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. So, you know, I scratch my head a little here with all this, as Christ was a pattern or example for all of us that follow him, for his followers, guidance or leading in its perfect and true, you know, perfect and true form is shown in his life, Christ's life, while he, the word became flesh and he came in the flesh, and believers can only expect the co-working of the Holy Spirit when they walk after this kind of a pattern of example. You know, the Holy Spirit always points to Scripture. It always points to Christ. Out of line with the patterns that cease to have the working of the Holy Spirit and become open to deceptive counterfeit workings of evil spirits. If the believer ceases to use his own mind, reason, will, and all his other faculties as a person and depends upon voices and impulses for guidance in every detail of his life, he will be led or guided by evil spirits feigning to be God. The word feigning, brothers and sisters, means that it's, it's a counterfeit. It's another spirit pretending to be God. And I can't over, oversensitize this for all of us because I've had many people, I've been in deliverance for 37 years. I'm not boasting, I'm boasting in the Lord. And I can't tell you how many people told me the Holy Spirit told them. And if the, it's not written in the word, the Holy Spirit didn't tell them anything. I want to say it's a figment of their imagination or being led and deceived by evil spirits, feigning to be God. So let's look at the inward drawings here, the counterfeit inward drawings, the bottom of page 135. At first, after the baptism of the spirit, the believer knows to a great extent the true guidance of the spirit of God. He knows, she knows, you can look at it male nor female in Christ Jesus, and restrain from action in like manner, such as when we speak to another about his soul, when to rise and testify in a meeting, etc. But after a time, he ceases to watch for this pure inward moving of the spirit, often through, listen to the word, ignorance, lines up with my people, perish for lack of knowledge, only because we don't study the word of God to show ourselves approved. So ignorance of how to read the, moni the monitions of his spirit, in other words, you're being duped in your own spirit, brothers and sisters, and begins to wait for some other insensitive or manifestations, people Oh, I got to wait upon the Lord. Can you feel the heat? You can, there's so many other things going on. And, and the evil spirits and the Holy Spirit are not, the, the, the evil spirits focus on all kinds of things, but the Spirit of God points to the Word of God. 
That's something very strong. You always got to remember in your heart because insensitive and manifestations to guide him in action. This is the time for which the deceiving spirits have been watching. Remember, you can't see spirits. That's why they elaborate to ensnare us even into passivity because at this point the believer has ceased unknown to himself to cooperate with the inward spirit in action to use his volition in other words back to we're supposed to think about stuff before we do it taking thoughts captive to the mind of christ to use his volition and to decide for himself is he now watching for or other supernatural indications indication of the way to go or of the course to take hence he must have guidance somehow some text some indication some uh, pro, uh provincial circumstance etc this is the amount of the opportunity for a deceiving spirit to gain his faith and confidence and to some word or words whisper softly they're exactly in accordance with the inward drawing that he has had but which he has not recognized as from another source other than the holy spirit you know jesse penn lewis is writing this to make us all aware who acted by the deep inner constraining and restraining of the spirit, the soft whisper of a deceiving spirit is so delicate and gentle that the believer listens to it and receives the words without even checking it. It says without question and begins to obey this soft whisper, yielding more and more to it without any thought or exercising his mind in judgment, reason, and that word again, volition. You know, that we're supposed to meditate on what we're doing. You know, the Bible says to take thoughts captive to the word of God, which is the mind of Christ. The feelings are now in the body, but the believer is unconscious that he is ceasing to act from his spirit and by the pure, unfettered action of his will and his mind, which is under the illumination of the spirit is always in accord with the spirit this is a time she's warning us here she says this is a time of great danger if the believer fails to discriminate the source of his drawing feelings plural and yields to them wherefore finding out their source he should examine his basic principle of decision especially when it has to do with feelings and it says here singular feeling lest he should be led away by any feeling without being able to say where it comes from or whether it is safe for him to go by it he should know there are physical feelings there are soulish feelings there's feelings in the spirit either of which can be divine or satanic the book study is saying to us in this source, therefore, reliance on feelings, feeling drawn, etc., is a source of great mischief, she writes, in our Christian lives. So, you know, you gotta be you gotta be on point when it comes to spiritual things. From this point, deceiving spirits can increase their control. For the believer has begun. What what has the believer begun to listen? To, the, to his own thoughts and not, not his volition, his will, or God's will needs to be done in our lives. And, and we always got to exercise our faith with taking anything we hear captive to the word of God. So, which can be developed acutely until he is always watching for that inner voice or a voice in the ear which is an exact counterfeit of the voice of God in the spirit, and thus the believer moves and acts as a passive slave to supernatural guidance. Now we're on, brothers and sisters, we're on page 137. The next thing I'm going to speak about is the counterfeit voice of God. Evil spirits are able to counterfeit. So what it says here, 
I didn't write it. I'm studying it with you guys, sharing with you my my heart to heart thoughts from being in the ministry. Evil spirits are able to counterfeit the voice of God because of the ignorance of who us as believers. They can do so, and the true principle of God's way of communication with his children, the Lord said, listen to what God says, it's the word of God. And we always got to go back to the word of God. The Lord said, my sheep know my voice. An example, my way of speaking to my sheep. He did not say his voice was audible. It wasn't an audible voice, nor a voice giving directions which were to be obeyed apart from the intelligence of the believer. So once again, you got the Holy Spirit. If it doesn't line up with what you're reading in the Bible, take a step back. But on the contrary, the word no indicates the use of the mind. See, when, when you study scripture, the truth becomes part of our hearts. Our hearts are circumcised. For although there is knowledge in the spirit, it must reach the intelligence of the man. Well, where's our intelligence? It's, it's located up here, or my head, I'm pointing to it. You got to think about it. Choose this day and, and figure out whether it's from God or from the enemy, the thoughts, so that the spirit and mind, listen to what it says here, bottom of this first paragraph, become one accord. The question whether God now speaks by his direct voice audibly to men needs consideration at this point. A careful study of the epistles of Paul. Very important you hear this part, brothers and sisters, which contains an exhaustive epitome of God's will for his church. Everything we need to know for the body of Christ, brothers and sisters, is already written. It's not a new revelation. As the books of Moses contained God's will and laws for Israel, seems to make it clear that God, having spoken to us today in his son, no longer speaks by his own direct voice to his people, nor does he appear since the coming of the Holy Spirit to guide the church of Christ into all truth. The Bible says we will receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's function is to uh, Bring us to the truth of God's word. He doesn't go against the word of God. You know, the spirit is to guide the church of Christ into all truth. Does he frequently employ angels to speak or to guide his children? Let's look at the ministry of the angels. You know, we all know the scriptures. The ministry of angels, the ministries are sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation. The word of God says, Hebrews 1.14, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them that shall be heirs of salvation? Well, that lines up, but not to take the place of Christ or the Holy Spirit. The apocalypse seems to show that the ministration of angels to the saints on earth is an administration of war. And where is that war, brothers and sisters? Exactly what this book is titled, War on the Saints. It's in the spiritual realm against the forces of Satan. But there is little indication given of ministry in any other way. After the first advent, and, and you know, I, I did a, there's some really good teachings here you know, with the bottom of the pages in this section that we're reading today, one is to go back and look at the illustration in page 125. And we just read all this stuff recently, so I'm not going to go back. And, and to see and remind ourselves going forward of the guidance God gives us in uh, chapter 9 on guidance. And he also goes... When you go to chapter 11, we're going to be there later on in the, the book study, you'll get a fuller light of this. And meanwhile, uh, I'm going to turn the page here 
to continue with the ministry of the angels, there was great angelic activity over the wondrous event of the father bringing the firstborn of the new race. And that was in Romans 8, 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed in the image of his son, that he might, Jesus was the firstborn among many brethren. I mean, that's why, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. That's why we have the word of God. You know, God doesn't go against his word. You know, he says, the firstborn. And, and I want to I wanna go on here a little with Hebrews 1, 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. So the angels of the Lord, every time someone's born again, Stop and rejoice because God's kingdom is increasing. Satan's kingdom is decreasing. Remember, the God of this world has blinded the mind of all those that do not believe. It's because there's a spiritual war going on. And the only way to fight the battle is in the spirit. And again, as the advent of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost began his working of forming a body like unto the risen head, because he's the chief cornerstone. And even during the early years of the church, the employment of angels in direct and visible communication with believers seems to give way to the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit. So the entire work of witnessing to Christ and leading the church into all truth has been committed to the Holy Spirit. Therefore, all intervention of angels or audible listen to this closely you got to get this into your spirit and into your your heart therefore all intervention of angels or audible voices from the super the the, the spiritual realm purporting pur purporting to be from god has to be taken as a counterfeit of Satan. And there's a lot of people that are being deceived today in a lot of ministries. Thus saith the Lord, and it's not thus saith the Lord. We have the word of God, brothers and sisters. The, uh, the supreme object here is to substitute the working of these wicked spirits in the place of God. In any case, it is in the safest in days of peril to keep the path of faith and reliance upon the Holy Spirit of God working. Listen to what the Holy Spirit does. He's working through the word of God. So as I'm on page 138 right now, and we're going to go down to the next section, how to direct the source of a voice. And boy. We've learned so much about this over the years. In order to detect which is the voice of God and which is the voice of the devil, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit alone is in charge to communicate the will of God to the believer. And then he works from within the spirits of a man and lighting the understanding of Ephesians uh, chapter one. And, and Ephesians one verses 17 and 18 teach us that that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what the hope of his calling is and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So as we look further into this, so as to bring unto the intelligent co-walk, working we got to co-work this we've got to use our brains working with what the mind of god which is the word of god the purpose of the holy spirit is briefly the entire renewal of the redeemed one in spirit soul and body he therefore directs all his working to the liberation of every faculty and never in any way seeks to direct a man 
as a passive machine. How many times over the years we studied this book and some of you have heard that. Even unto good, he, he works in him to enable him to choose the good and strengthen him to act, but never even for good dulls him or renders him incapable of making a decision. In other words, free action. Otherwise, he would nullify the purpose of God's redemption on Calvary and the purpose of his own coming. Boy, that touches my heart a lot because we're not predestinated like the Calvinists think. We can, I, I wrote, I did a title, Did You Ever Have to Make Up Your Mind? on a teaching I have up on the video teachings. And it's about you make the decision who you're going to serve. Yeah, God knows the heart, but you have the opportunity to get saved. And when believers understand these principles, the voice of the devil is recognizable. When it comes from outside the man or within the sphere of his circumstance and not from the central depth of his spirit where the Holy Spirit abides. So when it is imperative and persistent, urging sudden action without time to reason or intellectually weighing the issues. So sometimes you gotta, you gotta dig into the scriptures and reason in your own brain that God created for us and choose what you're gonna listen to. When it is confusing and clamorous so that the man is hindered from thinking, for the Holy Spirit desires the, the believer it's his desire for us to be intelligent as a responsibility being with a choice and will not confuse him. Listen to what she's writing here. We won't be confused as to make it incapable of coming to a decision. So if you're clamoring and you're, you're, you're not getting it and you're confused, that's the work of the enemy in you. The speaking of evil spirits can also be a counterfeit of the apparent inner speaking of the man himself, as if he were himself thinking and yet with no concentration of the mind. An example being persistent and ceaseless commentary, going into somewhere within apart from volition or mind action, just following a thought sometimes commenting on the man's own actions or the, even the action of others, such as you are wrong, you are never right, God has cast you off, you must not do that, et cetera, and et cetera. So now we're on the bottom of 139. This is how to detect the source of text supernaturally spoken. And these next couple of pages are very strong. It says here, the voice of the devil as an angel of light is more difficult to detect, especially when it comes from wonderful strings of text, which make it appear like the voice of the Holy Spirit. Voices from without, either as from God or angels, may be rejected, yet the believer may be deceived by floods of text. That's multiple thoughts or rushing thoughts. You know, God says, don't be in a hurry. Think things out, which he thinks are from God. So believers do get deceived thinking what they're listening to is from God, the Holy Spirit. In this case, the detection needs more knowledge. The examples. Does the believer reply, uh, rely upon these texts apart from the use of his mind or reason? Of course not. This indicates passivity. And these texts a prop to him, undermining his reliance on God himself, weakening his power of decision and right self-reliance. And this is where it really gets good. Do these texts influence him and make him elated and puffed up? You know, some people get very prideful. Well, I'm the only one that knows, or I'm being guided by God. You, 
you don't have what I have. I got these gifts. And whenever he says I, it's like I, 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 me, me, me. There's a lot of pride involved. We've all been there. Or crush and condemn him and throw him into despair and condemnation instead of leading him to sober dealing with God himself over the course of his life would a keen and increasing knowledge of right and wrong obtain from, where do you get it from brothers and sisters? I'm reading it right out of this book to you. You get your increasing knowledge of right and wrong obtained from the written word of God by the light of the Holy Spirit. So don't tell me God don't love us. You know, when, when you're driven into the word of God, that's the Holy Spirit making you seek diligently and when you do that god gives you wisdom it's free it comes from god if these and other such like results are the fruit of text given they may re, may they may be rejected as from the deceiver or at least the attitude and and steve taught this for years we've been teaching this neutrality taken to them until further proof of their source is given so if you don't understand something don't believe it don't be deceived wait until the good lord up above shows you the voice of the devil as distinguishable from the voice of god may also be known by its purpose and outcome Ob obviously if god speaks direct to a man that man must be infallibly correct and there's a lot of people that think they are infallible. And no man is infallible. I, I spoke that about the Roman Catholic Church, well, I think last week. In regard to the specific matter in question, a believer may be as he's led to ask another to a meeting. This was really good, this part. I've been over this a couple of times. Sometimes we think we're being led by the Holy Spirit, and we're really not. We're being led for a a breakdown by the deceiving spirits. The one asked must accept or give a lie to the other's leading. If the one who believed he was led still holds to that position, he considers the one who declined as deceived or else puts the matter aside without consideration, not realizing that failure in guidance means that he has been deceived himself or else becomes deceived by deceiving spirits. And that's why you really got to you got to size things up when you're you're serving God and we're all supposed to be lights in darkness. The next section I want to bring forth right now because there's a lot of reading in this one, so I'm just explaining it without, there's not a lot of scripture in this part of the book at this time. It says how evil spirits adapt their guidance to their victim. That's very important. Remember, they're evil spirits. They've been here for thousands of years. They pretty much know the character of people in the human race. I mean, you know, sin is sin. Sin is anything that's contrary to obeying God's word, people. Even warning people. There's so many, so many positive things in scripture that even Christians today overlook. Deceiving spirits carefully adapt their suggestions and leadings to the idiosyncrasies of the believer so that they do not find out. In other words, there's no leading will be suggested contrary to any strong truth of God firmly rooted in the mind or the contrary to any special bias of the mind. If the mind has a practical bent, no, and it says here, no visibly foolish leading will be given. If the scriptures are well known, nothing contrary to scripture will be said. If the believer feeds strongly on any point, the leanings will be harmonized to suit that point and wherever possible will be so adapted to previously true guidance from God as to appear to be a continuance 
of the same guidance. That's how subtle Satan is to deceive. Remember, the unclean spirits, their, their job is to deceive. And they'll take that one lie to get the door open so they can operate as even as, as subtle as it be. We all fall short sometimes. So here we see clearly the way of the enemy's working. The soul begins in God's will, but the purpose of the evil spirit is to draw it off into the carrying out of his will by counterfeiting. Listen to what she wrote here, counterfeiting the guidance of God. Satanic guidance alters the points of the life and misdirects the energies of the man. And you know, it's not just man, it's man and woman, woman's from man. There's neither male nor female in Christ. I always got to add that into the read. The believer should know that there are two distinct attitudes for guidance, which have seriously results in the difference that is not understood. Another example, if we're just trusting God to guide and trust that God is guiding, sometimes we really got to think about all the, you know, even in Proverbs, it says to, to submit our plans before the Lord. Remember, it's not our will, it's God's will on earth that needs to be done by us. We're servants of God now, we're born again. The first means reliance upon God himself. The second is an assumption of being guided, which can be taken advantage of by deceiving spirits. In the first, God does guide in response to definite trust in him, and he guides through the spirit of the man who continues, but you have to continue to cooperate with God's spirit, with his spirit, it says leaving every faculty free to act and the will, you still got to have a will to choose intelligently the right step in the path before him. And sometimes people don't really meditate and think about, oh, well, Lord, which way should I do this? Show me. You know, I always make God a decision maker in my thoughts. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. In the second one, evil spirits take advantage of an assumption that God is guiding independently, momentarily watchful. Cooperation with the Holy Spirit, a slight compulsion, may be noticed slowly increasing force until presently the believer says, I was compelled to do so and so, and I was afraid to resist. The compulsion being taken as an evidence of the guiding of God, instead of being recognized as contrary to God's principle of dealing with his children. And that's how easy and subtle that we can be deceived by these spirits. The deceiver, it says the deceived believer now becomes a slave to evil spirits. The bottom of 141. If yielded to and believed to be of God, the result that the believer becomes a slave to the supernatural power, which destroys, listen to what destroys, all freedom of volition and judgment. In other words, you stop going to God in your decisions. He begins to be afraid to act himself, lest he should not fill what he, fulfill what he believes to be a misuse obedience to the will of God, he asks permission to do the most obvious, simple duties of life and fears to take a step without permission. It's a little overborn, brothers and sisters. As soon as the deceiving spirits have obtained perfect control and the believer is so passively automatic that he is incapable of realizing his condition they do not need to work so much undercover then it says they insinuously 
commenced to direct him to the most absurd or foolish things, carefully working inside the range of his passive obedience to their will as to avoid the danger of awakening what? His reasoning powers. In other words, God, the devil doesn't want you and I to think. He wants to keep us as a robot, as a matter of obedience and not from any true conviction or true principle. He is bidden to let his hair grow long so as to be like Samson, a Nazarite, to go without his cap, to prove his willingness to obey the smallest matters. He must wear faded clothes as a test of no pride or as a crucifixion of self or as a mark of implicit obedience to God. And I can honestly confess that sin in my own life today, people. You know, it's not about anything we do. It's what God already established for us. We got to get off of the high-minded thinking and be meek and humble in all things. Jesse Penn Lewis wrote here in the next paragraph, these things may seem uh, trifles to others or trivial to others who use their reasoning power, but they have great issues in the purpose of the deceiving spirits who by these directions aim at making the believer a passive, unthinking, or unreasoning, and, it, and she calls it a medium. In other words, it can be used by the devil. The devil has his way in us because we're not taking the thoughts captive. Pliable to their will in obedience to which even in a trivial matter, their hold deepens upon them. In other words, the enemy really locks us down. When these foolish and absurd actions are publicly visible, the lying spirits know that they've destroyed the testimony of the deceived man in the eyes of sober people. But there are vast numbers of devoted believers known to the church at, last, at large who are not pushed in such extremes of exterior action but who are equally misled or in bondage to supernatural commands concerning matters of food, dress, manner, etc. And I see that all the time with people that are going backwards to the law. They won't eat pork. They, they, uh, it's crazy. And this is in Christianity today. You know? And those are evil spirits. It commands concerning matters of food, dress, manner, etc., in which they think they have received from God. The spirit of judgment of others. That's a whole can of worms, brothers and sisters. Legalism. And if you're not doing it the way we tell you we're doing it, then you're ostracized. And the secret of self-esteem for the consecrating to God, which accompanies their obedience, betrays the subtle working of the enemy. Well, there's a whole lot here. Could probably sit here and stop on this today because it betrays the subtle workings of the enemy. So I, I pray right now that we we go back and listen to what I said. I started on page, uh, I wanna say back to, let me see, counterfeit guidance, page 134 bottom. And now we're looking at, oh, let's keep going here. This is good now today. Let's, let's finish this a little more. Deceiving spirits carefully adapt their suggestions 
and leadings to the idiosyncrasies. I think I read that already. Turn in pages. I was on the bottom of 141. You know, and that's why I like book study. We don't have to be in a hurry. I started on the bottom of 134. We're on the bottom. And uh, we're on 142 right now. Let me mark it. And I hope this helps some of you. I know there's a lot of us that have read the book many times. Steve knows this book better than me. He, he really, really got into it. He was, he's the most diligent guy I ever met in reading War on the Saints. And the other one that I, I know of, I never met was Pastor Wynn Worley, but there's other pastors now that I'm seeing that give a lot of kudos to this book. And then there's, there's people that say, oh, it's not the Bible, but wait a minute. It was written by blood-bought brothers and sisters that lived through revival. And what they're telling us here how to recognize the enemy. And I think that's important for people that are gonna be in the ministry of deliverance. What do you do when a person gets some deliverance manifestations, then two or three weeks later, a month later, they're demonized again. What do you do with the passage that they, if you don't keep the house clean, they come back seven times worse. That came from Christ. There's a lot more to the spiritual battle than any man knows. And that's where I take my stand right now. You know, am I perfect in any way? Absolutely not. But it's because of Jesus Christ that we have power over all the power of the enemy. And, and, and you're going to see, even in War on the Saints, the person that's trying to cast the demons out gets so into the battle because they have compassion and, and love for the people that are bound. And that's where real fasting comes in. And I, I, I've been a reciprocant of seeing God's glory because I laid my life down to pray for people over the years. And I think the main thing for us to do is we're commanded to love God with our whole heart and love one another. I don't feel that love the way God commands it in the Bible, especially when people got demons manifest in it. You know, because the Bible says, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and by no means nothing shall harm you. Well, hey, wake up, people. To say, to say Roman Catholicism, this is not uh, the spinning of a head. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of vomiting, but maybe people should fast a little more instead of eat a little more when they go to these fellowships. Just food for thought. And I'll start the very uh, bottom. It's only one line next week. It's got, it's the counterfeits continue. This is counterfeit sin, counterfeit self. There's a lot here, brothers and sisters. And it's, it's not a race course for us to try to get it all in. So God bless you all. I'm glad I could do my part and try to help other people today. Amen. I have to shut the